Hello everyone, this is Jason from Primetime Aquatics and in this video I am going to be bringing you a species profile on the Malaysian trumpet snail. It sometimes gets a bad rap and if we can control their populations they can be a great addition to a lot of different freshwater aquariums. So stay tuned, we're going to talk a little bit about how you care for them, how they breed. Hope you enjoy the video. So I thought I would take you around the fish room and show you some Malaysian trumpet snails. These can be a fantastic addition to your cleanup crew provided that you manage your tank properly. By the way, if you are interested in these snails, check out our channel sponsor, flipaquatics.com. They do have them. So let's get into this. The scientific name is Melanoids tuberculatus. They are found throughout the southern parts of Asia and the Middle East, Malaysia, parts of Africa. These are very, very hardy snails. They are found in all types of water parameters in nature, from soft waters to hard waters, even brackish water. And so these can be one of the most resilient aquarium inhabitants you could possibly imagine. Now their size, they stay relatively small somewhere around an inch or so. Ours don't get any larger than that. They generally stay smaller. The coloration, as you will see throughout the video, is usually like a pale tan, maybe a brown. When they're very, very young, they can almost look white. And they are incredibly peaceful. They're really not going to attack anything, but they do a great job of, like I said before, being your cleanup crew. Now, they're gonna live about a year or so, but it's really not a concern because usually they will reproduce at a high enough rate where you will always have some in your fish tank. Now in our fish room, we really make no effort to control the populations of our Malaysian trumpet snails. If they are not in a tank, it's because the fish in that tank usually consume them. So some tank mates that might be safe, most community fish are going to be just fine. Shrimp, other snails usually work out okay. Uh, we do stay away from most African cichlids, especially the Malawi African cichlids like Mbuna and Peacocks. We have no Malaysian trumpet snails in those tanks and the reason for that is they eat them. Fish like tinfoil barbs and ballast sharks, a lot of your loaches will eat them. Severums will sometimes snack on them. We have found that we don't have a lot of them or hardly any of them in our shell dweller tanks, most likely because they are getting eaten there as well. You definitely want to stay away from assassin snails. That can potentially be a problem. Uh, they will uh, take care of Malaysian trumpet snails uh, populations as well. Now regarding water parameters, as I've already mentioned, these are very resilient organisms. And so for temperatures, they can go easily into the 60s and up into the 80s pH, as long as you're somewhere between a six and an eight, you're most likely going to be okay. Water hardness is anything close to average, you're probably going to be fine. The water quality really, it, it, what's interesting is I've actually had situations where I've changed out fish tanks, uh, decorations, and I put a bunch of sand in a bucket and I left it in that bucket for days. And when I put the sand back in the fish tank, the Malaysian trumpet snails had all survived just fine. So these are extremely hardy organisms. Uh, with food, there really isn't anything special that needs to be fed. They generally will feed on uneaten food, so that, whether that's flakes or pellets or decaying plants. They pretty much eat everything and they are very successful at that. In so much so that this is the thing that really needs to be controlled when you are keeping Malaysian trumpet snails so that their populations don't grow out of control. And so one of the things that you will find is if you are not properly taking care of the substrate, especially in non-planted tanks, if you are not gravel vacuuming or removing the detritus off the surface of the sand, they will start to grow out of control. If you are feeding a lot of sinking foods and it's too much and the organisms down there, whether it's catfish or plecos, if they're not eating all that food and the Malaysian trumpet snails have access to a lot of food, they can grow, their populations can increase quite rapidly. So we really don't have any special feeding requirements or anything special that we do for them. We allow them to be the scavengers that they are and they are good at it. In terms of tank size, pretty much anything over a couple gallons and you should be okay. Again, you just gotta keep an eye on the populations once they start to establish themselves. The decorations in the tank really 
don't matter all that much. They are fine. We have found that they are perfectly fine with plants. As you can see here, we've got them in almost all of our planted tanks without any issues whatsoever. I do recommend if you're going to keep them, they do better with sand. Here we're looking at them on gravel and they don't get to burrow as much as they do when they're on sand. What's really awesome about these snails and what I like about them more than other types of snails like ram's horn snails or your or pond snails is the fact that they, when you first turn the lights on, you can see that they're out just like in this picture. But then what's interesting is as the lights come on, they tend to go into the substrate and you don't see them anymore. And so it can be really shocking when you turn the lights on at first, you've got all these snails everywhere, but then you wait like an hour or so, maybe a little bit longer and they're gone. And it's, it's just very, it, it is an interesting thing. And so that can be an advantage. As you can see here, the snails are, are pretty much gone. And that's really due to the fact that they love to burrow. So they do better in sand for that purpose than they would in gravel. One other thing to consider if you are running a hang on back filter or a canister filter, it's always an advantage here if you've got some type of intake sponge covering that intake because you don't want these guys crawling into your intakes and potentially getting into the impellers of your hang on back filters or anything like that. It can happen, especially when they're small like this. So just keep that in mind. You might want to have something covering your intakes of your filters. We run sponge filters, so it's really not a big deal for us. And just as a side note, pretty much all the Malaysian trumpet snails that you're seeing, I had to shoot the video right as I turned the lights on because had I waited an hour or two, the snails would really have not been visible. That's why you're seeing so many in the tank because I shot the video while right as the lights were coming on. So what you're seeing here, once the lights go off, you really don't see the snails. I think it's a big advantage. So breeding them, there's really nothing special you have to do as long as you've got a handful of them. They will breed. The the thing that you have to remember is to control how many snails you get it really comes down to the amount of available food the less food that's available the smaller the populations will be if you have a lot of sinking food like i've already mentioned the populations will in fact grow what's also interesting about these particular snails is they do reproduce via sexual reproduction but they can also potentially the females can go through parthenogenesis now they're live bearers which is also pretty interesting i love this picture you've got a little hydra on top of a ram's horn snail and the ram's horn snail is on top of the malaysian trumpet snail and all of these are absolutely tiny the the malaysian trumpet snail is probably not much larger than a, a a small a pinky finger nail so these are very small at this point the way that you're seeing them in this video so uh, they are going to breed relatively quickly if they have the food sources available uh, I love these things again the, the positive aspects are they're small they're not all that visible when the lights are on they do stir up the substrate which can be good for your planted tanks they they do a very good job of cleaning up then you turn the lights on and they tend to go away there are some challenges and the challenges are going to be you have to control their populations and make sure that you're not overfeeding especially sinking foods you do have to be a little bit careful about your tank mates and so maybe the african cichlids or some of the south and central american cichlids might not be great they may decide to eat them certainly like i mentioned before assassin snails would be a no-go but other than that these are a really interesting type of organism and one that I would highly recommend if you get a chance and you know you can control the populations. This could be something that can really add a lot to your cleanup crew in your tank. So I hope you enjoyed the video. And if you did, share, subscribe, and we'll see you in the next one.